we have to really think beyond efficiency, beyond computing power, be beyond just connecting devices and think about connecting people. Number one, there's an incredible physicality to this. It's not just watching video on a rectangle, on a wall, or even on your handheld phone. You know in your head that you can walk anywhere in your room, but your body is telling you, no, you can't. Your knees start to buckle, you start to shake because it's such a physical experience. What Jeremy Bellinson is doing in Stanford VR, what they're doing there, which I think would um, provide a lot of insight and in what others may do down the road, is they're creating a virtual world where, uh, in particular, they're interested in whether or not people being in this environment and uh, engaging with this environment, witnessing and having the ability to tour, will have an impact on their behavior. In particular, they created um, sort of a, a, an experience around ocean acidification. You can read about it, you can talk about it with others, you can project. But having the opportunity to walk the shore and see the impact on the environment of what's yeah. happening today this is, I think, an example that is kind of very clear uh, that could um, suggest areas of, of how we might um, use this, these type of experience in, yeah. in education. Yeah, to really create new learning experiences. Yeah. There are consumer devices coming out on the market very soon, which means that they will be available, affordable. Uh, and a lot of us can play with them on, on the college campus in, in a various different settings, in the classroom, outside of classroom. Now with virtual reality, we can start thinking about um, bringing students to the virtual campfire, uh, having a story, like having a conversation that can uh, transcend the classroom, the campus, um, connect us globally. We can't be doing PowerPoint presentations for them. It's already boring enough for in so many cases, you know, and we're going to have to move on from that. And we can't just say, oh, the, the virtual world is over here or something else. We're just going to deal with the real world because our students are going to be growing up in a world where they're going to say, I need the skills, I need the knowledge to be able to navigate both the real, real world and the virtual environment. It's already affecting the movie industry. People are sitting around and going, how are we going to create movies in this environment? Because you can't use the standard techniques. The standard techniques, the director, the cinematographer, everyone guided you through the experience. And all of a sudden, you're going to, as the viewer, have control over that experience. And there's going to have to be a new language of film, a, a new language for, for how, you know, sort of shaping the viewer experience on this. And, you know, there, there's been different ways. I mean, Chris Milk and the uh, Clouds Over Sidra does a wonderful thing of dropping you into almost like scenes, but then taking you to the other scenes. So you don't aimlessly walk around the refugee camp because you're not going to do VR as a traditional film. You're going to have to come up with something completely different. And I think as this begins to come into higher education, and really it's, it's coming right now, and particularly next year as consumer devices come out, um, we're going to have to think very carefully about what kind of, you know, what kind of media do we do? Do we produce? What kind of media do we have our students watch? What, um, you know, how do you use this media? Mm -hmm.